What we're trying to achieve at Caltech is understand how evolution innovates. And this is a great example of that because what Jenny and her team did was take an existing protein and convert it into a protein that catalyzes a whole new chemical reaction never before known in biology. Just a few mutations in this protein made it very efficient for making this carbon-silicon bond that only human chemists thought that they could make. And now bacteria can do it. So being able to make carbon-silicon bond biologically enable us to make the first step towards making organosilicon compounds using biology. And this has never been done before. Organosilicon compounds have many applications in our lives. They are used in medicines and agrochemicals. Even the organic LEDs in our computer and TV screens use organosilicon compounds. It's very exciting to start thinking about using biology to make all these products that up to now we need synthetic methods to make them. Nature does the actual chemistry much better and can make molecules that human chemists have not yet figured out how to make. That's also exciting. Not just using nature as an alternative to human chemistry, but going on beyond what humans can do. We'll look at many different proteins in our refrigerators, and actually a lot of them can form carbon-silicon bond, but not very well. And this particular protein from the bacterium from Iceland can do this reaction well and also very selectively. So we decided to use this protein as a parent for evolution and significantly enhance its potential for forming carbon-silicon bond. With directed evolution, we breed molecules in the laboratory like a farmer breeds agricultural products for thousands of years. We do it now at the level of the individual molecules, the DNA that encodes a protein. We make mutations, we recombine it, and we decide who is acquiring features that we're interested in. We iterate on the process until we achieve what we want. We provide them opportunities which do not exist in nature in the laboratory and found that they can actually do things nature has never discovered before. For the first time, we set foot into a chemical space in nature which nobody has traversed before. And it's a very humbling and wonderful experience to be able to witness that. And I think there are so much more scientists and engineers can do with this new chemical space. And uh, I look forward to what we can discover in this new area of research. Why does life look the way it does? We can start asking for the first time, what happens if you put silicon in place of carbon in living systems? It's very hard to explore that chemically unless you have organisms that can make these bonds. You remember your old Star Trek episodes, the Horta. We are dealing with a silicon creature of the deep rocks. They're finding life inside of rocks with some silicon form. We're not actually trying to find life in rocks. We're more trying to put rocks in life, but that's okay. <laughs>